Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Ryzen 3000 is well and truly here, and so are a lot of new AIO cooling options. We've had the Cooler Master ML240P Mirage since it was announced, and we've used it in quite a few builds already. Now, we've started getting a lot of questions about the cooler itself, so we decided it was time to give it the Gear Seekers treatment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new Cooler Master ML240P Mirage in an AM4 based system. You asked for it, here it is. Let's do it. I just want to make this super clear, this video is for demonstration purposes only. This is not a review. Every system, motherboard, case, fan placement and setup is different. Make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying parts for all of your builds. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Cooler Master ML240P Mirage on AMD's AM4 platform. We're not showing you how to install it on Intel sockets in this video. That version will probably come probably this time next week, so make sure you watch the entire video before asking questions because chances are I'm going to answer all of the inevitable questions in this video anyway. So yeah, let's uh, answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. The CPU is the Ryzen 7 3700X and the case is the Fantex Eclipse P400A. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes and to reflect a, a common combination of parts for an installation like this because they're very popular parts at the moment. No, the installation is not the same as the old ML240R RGB. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It also depends on your case and the clearances for your case. Yes, it's RGB, but it's addressable RGB only. Yes, it comes with the RGB fans that are shown in this video. Yes, you can put whatever fans you want on it, like, like literally any fans that you want, as long as they fit. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box. Yes, it will work with almost every single AMD, AM4, CPU and motherboard combo you're about to ask about in the comments from the launch of Ryzen up until the foreseeable future. Yes, it will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, RGB Fusion and Polychrome RGB. Yes, the thermal paste is included and no, you don't have to fill the cooler, you don't have to top it up, you don't have to maintain anything at all. Now that's out of the way, let's jump right in and show you how to install the brand new Cooler Master ML240P Mirage. Let's start off by taking a look at what you need to get this installed in your system. You've got some screws, you've got some bolts that mount to the back plate, you've got the nuts that mount the cooler to the top of the IHS, you've got the standoffs for the back plate and the plastic clips that hold everything together. Unlike other AM4 cooler installs, you will actually need to replace the backplate and not use the standard backplate that comes with the motherboard. So we're going to be using this backplate and you're going to need these brackets. These brackets are specifically for AM4 installations. Let's start this installation off by setting up the backplate. You're going to need these standoffs all four of them, but I'm just going to grab one in this clip. You're going to need these plastic clips. And what you're going to want to do is feed them through the holes I'm about to show. Now, these are actually labeled for the type of installation. As you can see here, it says for AMD, this is the side that needs to face away from the motherboard. And what you want to do is grab those little standoffs, put them in the hole and actually put them towards the outer edge of that long oval hole as I've just shown here, and get one of those plastic clips and slide them over the top. Now they're a little bit tight to get on, but just push it, it will go on, and push it on, and it will clip in quite easily. And what you want to do is rinse and repeat that process for every corner. Just make sure that the standoffs are towards the outer edge when you're using the clip to lock them into place. When you're done setting up the back plate, it should look something like this. Okay, let's move on to setting up the motherboard itself. You will need to remove the standard AM4 mounting solution. So what you want to do is just take out the four screws just like this. I'm going to speed it up just so you don't have to sit here and watch me doing it at a normal speed because it would take forever and lift up the board and take the back plate away. Like I just showed, we set up a new back plate. 
Don't throw any of this stuff out because chances are you might want to change the cooler later down the line or if you want to sell the motherboard. I've had a lot of people complaining that they threw this out, so just hold on to it. Grab the backplate that we set up just a few moments ago and the easiest way to install this is to lift the motherboard up, put the backplate down on a flat surface and then lower the motherboard onto the backplate, lining it up. And as you can see here, I didn't get this quite right the first time, but yeah, you'll probably uh, be better than me at doing this. The next step is grabbing all four of these bolts yeah, these ones pictured right here. And what you're going to want to do is actually screw them into the standoffs. Now you can finger tighten these to begin with. There isn't a correct way to do this, so just finger tighten it for now. And I'm gonna show you what you can do. You can get this little included wrench and actually then go ahead and tighten them. But don't tighten them too much, otherwise you'll never be able to get them undone. Just lock them in. I think this step's actually optional. If you're trying to build quickly, you might not need to use a wrench, but it is recommended that you use it. We've had quite a few comments with this cooler of people talking about the back plate being loose and moving around. It's designed to be this way, so you don't have to worry. Once you tighten it, it will lock into place. Okay, let's get those brackets onto the block itself. It's pretty straightforward to get this done. On the side of the block, you notice there will be some slots. And these slots have little notches in them which line up with the notches on these brackets and just drop them in. And what you'll notice is once you drop them in, they won't move. And all you need to do is grab the included screws and screw the bracket in, just like this. Very, very easy and straightforward. And once you're done doing that, you wanna rinse and repeat that process on the other side. I'm gonna show you how to do this one more time. Line up the bracket with that slot in the side of the block, slide it in, and just tighten up those screws. It is very straightforward. Don't forget to remove the protective plastic peel off sticker, otherwise your CPU temperatures will be very, very warm. Locate eight of these long bolts. These are used to fasten the fans to the radiator and the way that we're gonna install this is by putting the radiator on the back side of the front panel of this case and putting the screws through the fan and through the case and just fastening them up. But like I mentioned in the introduction of this video, it most likely will be different for your case. It's different to mount it on basically every other case. It may not fit, it might fit this way. You'll just have to experiment or just do a little bit of research. We can't actually mount this in the top of this case because the motherboard VRM cooling is too high. Okay. Once you get that all nice and done and untightened up, you can use a screwdriver to tighten them, but they're actually designed to be tightened with your fingers. Feed the cables from the fans to the back side of the case to make your life a little bit easier later on in the installation, and you'll see why we do this a little bit later, like I just mentioned. The next thing you wanna do is locate the included tube of Master Gel Pro Thermal Paste, and you'll need to locate these four nuts so you can fasten the block to the mounting solution that we just set up. Now, this is up for debate. This is the way that I recommend installing thermal paste for Ryzen 3000 chips. There are lots of different techniques. You don't have to do it the exact same way that I did. Lower the cooler onto the thermal paste and the IHS of the CPU that you just applied. Give it a little bit of a, uh, little bit of a swish and squish around just to spread that thermal paste nice and good. What you want to do is get the nuts and fasten them on the opposing corners. Now I'm just gonna show you this from a top view so you can see what I mean. Just finger tighten them for now, just to get them on there. Don't do each corner up all the way because you'll find it very hard to get it fully installed. And just rinse and repeat that process to get it to almost as tight as you can. Now, I wanted just to point this out as well. This corner with AM4 insulations is quite difficult because of the pipes coming out of the block. I've talked to Cooler Master about this. They're aware of the issue. Don't worry, it won't end your life. Just uh, tighten them up with the screwdriver, if you will. You can use your fingers to do it up, but this is just for good measure. Okay, let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's do some of the wiring. We're going to attach the two-way PWM splitter. This is pretty straightforward. What you want to do is locate the CPU fan header on your motherboard. It could be labeled something else depending on your board, but in our case, it's the CPU fan and feed it through the back and plug in the CPU fan header. This is going to save us some time a little bit later. Now, we're going to show you what to do with these two 
two cables that come off the block itself. The first one we're going to take a look at is the PWM connector. What you want to do is locate the CPU opt or W pump or It'll be in relation to an AIO or an optional CPU connector, depending on your motherboard. In our case, it is CPU opt. If you're not sure what this is called with your motherboard, just refer to your motherboard manual. It will most likely tell you where to plug this in and just plug it in and you should be good to go. Now, the other cable that is coming out of the block is the three pin five volt addressable RGB connector. You don't need to do anything with this now, except pass it through to the back of the case. It's gonna make your life a lot easier when you're trying to cable manage and hook it up. Okay, let's plug in the fan. So the, the two-way PWM splitter that we just plugged in, what you wanna do is locate the two PWM power connectors from the fans and plug them into the splitter just like this. It's very, very easy and very, very straightforward. It only plugs in one way. Now that your fans are powered, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's hook up the RGB. I'm gonna show you a few ways to hook up the RGB, but this step needs to be done regardless of which way you connect your RGB. So this is the three-way RGB splitter. What you're wanting to do is get that three-way RGB splitter that is included with the cooler, locate the three RGB cables that come out of two fans and the pump itself and plug them into that splitter and just rinse and repeat that process until all three cables are connected and then we're going to move on to the first way to connect up RGB with this setup because like I mentioned there is a couple ways to do it. The first way is we're going to plug the other end straight into the motherboard so you can use ASRock Polychrome RGB or RGB Fusion or whatever you like You'll want to locate a three pin addressable RGB header on your motherboard and you can go ahead and plug this straight into your motherboard. And if that's the way that you wanna do it, your installation is now complete for this cooler. But if you're wanting to use the Cooler Master RGB controller, there are a couple ways to connect the controller as well. So let's start off with getting the USB connected. You wanna locate this USB cable this only plugs in one way to your motherboard, so we're gonna show you how to do this right now. Locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard, and you wanna grab that cable and feed that header end through from the back of your system and plug it straight into the motherboard just like that. Locate this included USB cable. This does come in the box, don't worry, you don't need to use your own. And what you wanna do is plug the USB end into the USB port on the other side of that header cable. On the bottom of your controller, plug it into the USB and that's the controller connected as far as USB. You will also need to connect up some SATA or SATA power depending on where you are living in the world and there should be one free on your power supply. And it will look like this once you've got both of those things plugged in. The next thing we're going to do is locate one of these little header connectors for the three pin five volt addressable RGB. You can plug it into any of these connectors. Just make sure you take a note for later when you want to configure it in the software of which one to plug it in. I plug it into the first one to make it easy for memory later down the line and plug in that other end of that addressable RGB cable that we connected in the first step into the controller. So this is basically just replacing it, plugging it straight into the motherboard, but rather into the controller. Now we're gonna show you how to connect the pass-through in case you can't decide whether or not you wanna use the controller or not. The cooler comes with this pass-through cable. It's very easy to connect. What you wanna do is plug this end, the ones with the pins pre-installed in it, into this bottom connector on the controller. And what you wanna do is get the other end and just like plugging it directly into the motherboard, locate that addressable RGB connector and plug the cable straight into your motherboard. But if you don't want to do that and use software control only, you're all done. You're all good to go. Your ML240P Mirage should be installed and you should be ready to go. And if you had any luck, it should look a little something like this. <laughs>
I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Discord or drop a comment down below. But make sure you read the comment section first because myself or someone probably would have already answered your question already. Please take that into consideration before asking any questions. I only say that because I don't want you to waste your time asking a question that you don't have to ask. Also, if you've got any questions about the RGB setup, we've done a full installation and setup guide for the Cooler Master ARGB ecosystem, and there is a link in the description or up there somewhere if you get stuck. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek, and I like this cooler, it looks pretty cool. That mirage effect is very nice. Thanks for watching.